Welcome to Beginner Golf Basics, the short game. Welcome to Beginner Golf Basics, the short game. We've designed this five part video series for all you golfers out there looking to learn the basics of the short game. By the end of this series, you're gonna be playing with more confidence and shooting lower scores. The short game is all about controlling distance. Now throughout this five part video series, we're gonna be giving you the skills to help you improve your game instantly. We're going to be looking at chipping, pitching, putting, bunkers, and even giving you the skills on how to practice this. Now make sure when you've watched part one, you head over to meandmygolf.com to see the rest of the parts and sign up for free. If you're new to the game or just looking to sharpen up your short game, then this video series is a must watch. Let's take charge of your game. Now Andy, before we get started, big thank you to the Asprey for supplying such a fantastic golf course to show off all of these situations that we're going to be doing throughout beginner short game. We're on the 17th green. We're talking about the chip and run shot. Now it's important for the viewers to understand what is a chip and run and what situation will they need that shot. Okay, well it's important to know that you're not going to always hit the green. So what's going to happen, you're going to find yourself missing the green and a chip and run is basically when you're just off the green. It's a short distance and what you're really looking to do is to chip the golf ball onto the green as close to you as possible and let the ball really roll or run towards the hole. So it's quite a low shot, doesn't need much power and it doesn't need much height. But there's lots of different clubs that you can use to play the shot based on the situation. So it's important to know really how the club affects the shot. So let's give you a few examples. So you can actually chip with any of your irons from three iron down to your lob wedge. And it's important to understand actually how these work. The lower the number, the lower the loft. So the lower the loft means that it's actually going to run a lot more and actually go a lot lower in the flight. So that's going to help when determining which club you use around the green. Now, here's, a, here's my first shot that I played here. This was with the seven iron. So what you're going to notice, this is the lower loft of the three. It lands very quickly on the green and spends the majority of the time rolling towards the hole. Now, the second shot I used was a pitching wedge, a slightly more lofted club in the bag. You can see again, this one lands a little further than the seven iron and rolls less than the seven iron. And then the third shot is with my sand wedge, the most lofted club in the bag. You can see a slightly higher flight, lands further again, and again, spends a little less on the ground. So it's really important that you understand and get used to how these shots react Pierce, with yeah. the different clubs, because that's going to help you assess the situation, which is really important. Well, that's what we need to do next. We need to assess the situation of the shot you have here. Right then, Andy, what I would like you to do is to show the viewers and talk through the situation we have here and how you would approach that. Okay, well look, we've got six yards between the ball and the green, and then we've got another 15 yards to the hole. The green also slopes a little bit from left to right, and it's also downhill. So I'm actually taking all these things into account when choosing the right club. Now think about this, if you can land the golf ball as close to you as possible, it's gonna be a much more efficient and consistent way, but we still wanna land the golf ball on the green. So my landing spot here is gonna be about a yard onto the green. And that's gonna help me determine what club I use. Now, remember the lower the number, the lower the loft, and the more time the golf ball is gonna have on the ground. Now I know from my experience of playing, I've played lots of chip shots. I know for me that it's going to be a pitching wedge. A pitching wedge will hopefully land the golf ball roughly about a yard onto the green and then actually roll towards the hole. And this is something that you guys need to actually work out for yourself. Plenty of practice and experience will help determine actually what the club is going to do. And again, from myself, it's the experience that really helps me just and choose that. I think the good thing with this as well, Andy, is you're using the club, as you said, which is going to get it lowest possible flight, but land it still on the green. Now, you may find through experience that you're better off lofting it all the way to the flag. In our experience of when we're seeing golfers, that isn't usually the way. So the lower option is usually the more consistent for sure. Definitely, so all we need to do now, once we've assessed the situation, is actually how to play the shot. So let's go and talk about technique. Andy, I really like the way that you've just assessed that situation. But does it work? Let's find out, shall we? Well, Can yeah, you play a shot? Let's play a shot and let's see if my uh, let's see if I really chose the right club. That's the key thing, Pierce. You haven't changed your mind, have you? Or no, anything I haven't like changed that? my mind. I'm, I'm ready <laughs> to go. So hopefully, land it yard on the green, and you'll see how the ball will run towards the hole. Yeah, it was about a yard onto the green, wasn't it? Hello. Oh. Pretty good. Doesn't get any better than that, does it? Pretty good. Right. Okay. So look, what sort of things? are you looking at in the setup? Before we get into the actual movement of the stroke and, and actually the strike, which obviously is very important, yeah. 
what are we looking at in the technique of the setup? Okay, well look, it's totally different. If you've seen beginner golf basics, that long game, mm -hmm. and you've worked at that, then it is very, very different <laughs> to that. The only thing that's really very similar is how we hold the golf club. So we're going to keep the same hold. So if you haven't seen that, make sure you go and check that out. It's going to give you some good ideas of how to hold the golf club. So we're going to go with it, the same hold. Grip pressure is going to be very light. So on a scale of one to 10, I'd say somewhere around the three or four mark. So not gripping it really tight, but fairly light so we can have some feel in the club head. That's exactly why you do it. So you can get that feel in the club head. Good, I was going to ask you that. Excellent. So we always talk about this. It's all about, this short game is all about controlling distance, so not creating it. So it's going to be different to a seven iron. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my setup here, normal grip, but notice how my feet now are really close together. Okay, this is going to limit, eliminate any power pierce. We don't really need the legs too much yep. apart from really to keep stable. And we're actually going to move in really close to the golf ball and get the club now very upright. So you can see so different to a seven iron where I'd be sort of this wide stance and standing away. And I think a lot of people when they first do this, when they get the club very upright, it feels very alien. And we're often telling people more upright, more upright, more upright. So just exaggerate that to start with. Okay, so close in. Shaft more upright, again, feet fairly close together. And I'm gonna position the golf ball roughly in the center of the heels. So again, some people actually grip down the club on this shot, which is fine, or you can go full length like a normal shot. It's really just a bit of personal preference on that. Some people grip down just to feel a, a little bit more control of the golf club. So I've gone upright, close, nice and tall posture, ball in the middle of the stance. And from here now, I'm gonna just favor the lead side, a little bit of weight on the left leg, and the shaft is leaning forward ever so slightly pierced. And this is gonna really help me get this important strike on the golf ball. So it's almost going to allow for an ever so slightly descending blow when you're hitting the shot, isn't Definitely. it? Definitely. Okay, so let me, let me see here another one from this setup because that's, uh, it looks perfect the way that you've described that. That, that was a little bit under hit, wasn't it? But, but you'll see that actually, even it was just maybe a yard short and look at the shot still. And this is the, the beauty of playing these shots. And this is why we actually want to go quite low. Yeah because the quicker we can get the golf ball rolling towards the hole, the more consistent it's gonna be. That is a perfect example of you getting the perfect strategy, so you assess the situation perfectly, didn't quite execute it, but because you did a good assessing of the situation, the result is still pretty good. If you just stood there with a lob wedge and got that wrong as much as you got that one wrong, yeah. it probably would have been a disaster on the shot. Definitely. Okay, so look, that's really important that we build a consistent setup, and I think you described that perfectly. How about the strike? How are we going to get that strike consistent when we're doing this. So what's the swing going to look okay, like? Okay, well look, when it comes to chipping again, we, we've got the loft on here to do the work. We haven't got to try and help it up, which a lot of people still try and do. So it's really making sure that we can get the strike, which is going to help us deliver the consistent um, distance control as well, Pierce, which and is important. It's exactly right. And don't you know underestimate this. This is probably when you're first starting, one of the biggest reasons for the inconsistencies, trying to lift the golf ball in the air, let the loft do the work. So show, show people how you're going to do that. Andy. Okay, so in terms of my practice swing, this is really going to help shape and help sort of deliver that consistent strike. So you can see here from here, I've got my arms and my club in this nice sort of structure. Now, what I want to do from here is I actually want to make sure that I can hit the ground roughly where the ball is going to be, but I want to maintain this structure with the hands and the arms. So you can see here, what I'm not getting is any independent movement of the club head and breaking this structure down. That really makes it very inconsistent, adds some speed, which you don't necessarily want in this shot, and really makes it hard to get a good strike on the shot. So in my practice swings, I'm making sure I brush the ground and keep the structure. So you can see there, I've still got a light pressure in the hands, but my structure in the hands and the arms are very consistent. And that really helps control the distance, which is key as well. And, and you can see when you're hitting the ground there, you're not taking a big divot out of the ground, are you? You're just literally brushing the grass. Yep. So I think that's a really you know, important thing to do. Get a couple of practice swings before you're hitting the shot. Keep that structure and brush the grass. Again, landed again, not quite the place on the first one that you hit, but again, because it's a lot easier for you to judge landing the ball in that area as opposed to an area which is 10 yards further down, you can see the results are still going to be and pretty And three good. shots like that I would take any day of the week. You'll probably knock all those putts in, I would have thought. Definitely. So the key thing now, really, once we've sort of got the setup right and the strike, it's all about distance control, which is the most important thing. 
So before we get into distance control, let's talk about the two main deadly sins that we see golfers do when it comes to chipping. You want to avoid these if you can. The first one is when golfers try and help the golf ball into the air. We see them keep all their weight on their back foot and often scoop the wrists like this in an effort to try and help the golf ball up in the air. Remember the loft's going to do the work. All we need to do is keep the weight on the front leg and keep the structure in the arms. Now the second one is when golfers try and get the golf club to swing straight down the target line. Again, this makes it really difficult to get a good solid strike on the golf ball. What we want is the golf club to swing in from the target line on the way through. And as you can see, my weight is on this lead side. So let's give it a shot. Keep the weight on the front leg, get the golf club moving in and keep that structure. Now, because we are chipping, we're going to assume that you're going to be pretty accurate. So the most important part then of the shot is the distance control. So are you able to control that distance? Now, Andy, how do we want to go through this? How do we want to create that control? Well, it's all about controlling the speed. Now, it's mm. so different to the a full seven iron where we get this sort of massive increase in speed because we're trying to hit the golf ball a good distance. And as we always talk about in short game, it's about controlling it. So if we can control the speed, it's going to be much easier to control the distance. And it does change a lot compared to, let's say, hitting a seven iron pierce. Okay. So think about it this way. If you think about the, to judge the distance, the length of the backswing is going to dictate how far the ball is going to go. And what we want to do with this is actually get the through swing to match the distance that you swing the club back. So I'm just going to do a shot here or swing here, back and through, and you'll notice that the through and the backswing are very similar distance. This helps produce a smooth speed, which then helps you judge that distance. And I think if you can think about really altering the distance or the, the length of your backswing to yeah. suit the distance, it's so much easier, Pierce, than actually trying to sort of almost slow down or accelerate too fast quite hard to do that and judge it well. And you can see when you are going back and through the same distance, if you just have a few practice strokes there, we can see that the speed is very consistent as you're doing this. It's very constant, the speed is. And often we see golfers, especially for the first time, they have this sort of aggressive swing through and it's very hard to get that yeah, right as well. It is, it so if we deep. can get it back and through similar distance, you're, you're going to notice that the distance control there is going to be a lot better. Yeah. Okay. So once we have created that feel, you know, you need to understand then if you've got different targets, for instance, that you want to go to, you're going to need different backswing lengths. So, for instance, if we have a target on the front of the green here, it's obviously going to be a shorter backswing. Definitely. Isn't it? So, look at the difference. All I'm going to do here now is just change that length of swing. You can see there that is going to produce a slower speed, which is going to produce less distance. Yeah. Again, if I went to the, the flag there, what we would see now is slightly longer, back and through, similar sort of distance. And if we had a back location just at the top there, I would now just lengthen that whole swing out as opposed to actually just changing the speed. It's, the, it's, it's amazing how you can judge that distance just by making slightly increase in the length. Yeah. I think what strikes out to me that when we go through this process is the amount of practice swings that we have when mm. we're doing this. And the practice swings are creating the feel. We talk about this a lot. When you're on the golf course hitting a full seven iron, do you really need a practice swing? Maybe, maybe not, but you know it's going to be a pretty repeatable distance. But on a short shot, when you're trying to figure it out, you're trying to look at this situation and figure out what pace you need, that's when a practice swing can be really good and also getting that interaction with the ground as well. Definitely. So, okay, let's say we're now we're ready to play the shot. So let's go back to the flag. Yeah. Now, there's one thing that we like to do to all our students when they're playing their chip shots, and it's the number one thing that I think you should do. What is it? Okay, it is hold your finish. Okay, okay, so when we do this, we want to make sure we do a swing, hit the shot and hold your finish because this is going to give you feedback. It's going to give you feedback to the length of the swing, but also the structure of what you've done with your hands and arms, which we've talked about is so important here. If we hold the finish and we've let that sort of club release past the body there, we yeah. know that the, the shot might not be the, the best shot there. Or even falling back onto that back foot, as we discussed earlier, trying to lift it. I mean, you'll be aware if you do those faults, those deadly sins, you'll be totally aware by when you hold your finish. Definitely. So I'm going to play the shot here and let's evaluate what I do on this one, Pierce. Yep. And let's just see if uh, you can evaluate maybe my technique. Should I give you marks out of 10, Marks out of 10, here we go. Ah. Three. Uh, no, i tell you what, if we just hold there, Andy, we can see, and look, it's a really nice golf shot, but we can see that the weight is still on the lead side. The structure of your arms is very good. I know the contact with the ground was very good as well. The club is arcing around you. So all the things that we're looking for when we play the shot, there's no point you playing another one, really, you, is there? You're going to give me that one, aren't you? I'd give you I that can put. I pick so. that up. I'd give you that put. So you can see everything that we've sort of worked at there has just been put into 
the hitting of that shot. So that's the end of part one of Beginner Golf Basics, the short game. We hope you enjoyed it. Make sure now you go and practice your chipping. Yes, and we'll see you in part two where we talk about the putting. We'll see you there. So we hope you enjoyed part one of Beginner Golf Basics, the short game. Please post any comments and questions down below. Now to make sure you don't miss out on the next four parts, you need to go to mearmygolf.com, click the link in the corner there for the 30-day free trial and to see the rest of that video series. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in part two.